Hello and welcome to this week's edition of The Focal Point. My name is Bad Kakoza. Last week, I brought you part one of the Wasongora story that focused on the historical background. This evening, I would like to bring you the second and the last part that features the ordeal in Queen Elizabeth National Game Park and the proposed solution to the problem. In March 2006, the Basongoro were expelled and thrown out of DRC. They were transported by the Congo authorities up to Mpondo border post of Uganda side. When they crossed into Uganda, they were temporarily accommodated in some places in Yakaton's area and where. We didn't have any alternative because we couldn't go back to where we were. Now, this road leads from Katwe all the way up to the Democratic Republic of Congo. Now, this side of the road is a place where the pastoralists kept their animals when they crossed from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Now, when you cross the road and move towards this side, this place is called Nyakatonzi area. Nyakatonzi area is a community area which is occupied by the Basongora people, the pastoralists who permanently live here. When these people came and we appreciated that they have nowhere to put the animals, so we settled them partly as we wait for defining the whole problem and see how best we can handle it as a government. These are people who had been thrown out of Kayanzo. These are people who had been thrown out of parts of Mhoche. These are people who had been thrown out of parts of Ruehingo. And they had been forced to move hopelessly, as if they don't belong to this country. Meanwhile, an interministerial committee headed by the Minister of Agriculture and Animal Industry and Fisheries, comprising key stakeholders, was appointed by the President to study, analyze the Basongora issue, and come up with an implementable solution. Uh, he appointed um, me as the chairman of the committee, and uh, there were other ministries, like Ministry of Local Government, uh, the Minister of, Disa Minister of Disaster Preparedness, um, uh, Minister of Internal Affairs, uh, Minister of Lands, um, Uganda Prisons, uh, uh, the, the, the Commission of Prisons, the Commission of the, the Inspector General of Police, um, and uh, representatives of Uganda Wildlife Authority. Um, and any other ministries that we feel we can cope. For a while, the Basongora stayed within the boundaries of the located areas from where they grazed their cattle. Keeping over 18,000 heads of cattle in a restricted area on the fringes of the national park that is covered with lush vegetation was too tempting for people whose cattle are always thirsting for pasture. Inevitably, they surged into the park this action no doubt caused serious concern to the National Wildlife Authority. Other people took advantage. The other Basongora who had some grazing areas in other areas, they also started invading the park. The Minister of Tourism, accompanied by his director of UWA, they came to the National Park and talked to the people who had come into the National Park. They sat with them for a number of minutes, discussed with them, and the Minister of Tourism, Honorable Kundo, told them that, I understand your situation, give me time, stay here, I'm going to consult. And he promised he's going to tell the President. Now, when he went, after some time, the President came and found people in the National Park, and he told us, that he's going to talk to the government to solve the Basongora problem. The interministerial committee had been given two weeks in which to come up with a solution. But nine months had elapsed without any conclusive solution, and park authorities, ironically being part of the committee, became impatient. So we had to take some action, not only to create order, but also to remind the committee that the two weeks had long expired. On the 6th May 2007 at dawn, the Basongoa returnees that had come here to Rangiri, to the northwest of the park, 
woke up to a surprise raid by the park authorities that brutally destroyed the settlements, property, and caused serious injuries to people in a bid to evict them from the park. At the time of the raid, this temporary facility was holding 125 people. The entire settlement looked like it was struck by a hurricane. Forty-seven-year-old Geoffrey Chisa narrowly survived death when a bullet from the raiders missed his chest and tore through his triceps. this is the bullet wound that was sustained by this guy who was shot at by him. Geoffrey subsequently put up a structure to house his wife and 12 children while he waits for the next surprise. Mm. Mm. Forty-five-year-old Kezia Kato lost her property and her house in the raid. She sustained a bayonet wound in the head as she tried to stop the raiders from vandalizing her property. Her husband had fled. These are bullet holes that rip through the this. Uh, saucepan of this lady who was who lives in this house and this is her house. <coughs> mm. 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 <clears throat> She's trying to explain to me that uh, she was bayoneted here on her on her head, so you can see the scar of the bayonet that ripped through her skin here. Mm. She now lives in a small shelter with her husband and five children. Twenty-seven-year-old Christopher Happy walks with the aid of a walking stick. During the raid, a bullet ripped through his right foot. He survived death when he fell down after failing to run. He says the raid was carried out by Uganda Wildlife Authority Rangers, assisted by the army. Mm. 
Captain Kasemeza Galegeine wa conservation mamweta mm, conservation warden nanka Benon ene abantu aba bakatuzindukamu hakaija captain Kasemeza in cooperation command chiruchi by zinduka hanuna batanika kutera abantu 12 batera abantu amasasi umuntu kwali ujya kubaza isasi ya kubaza isasi wali ujya kubuzo te bintu byanje byafa buta bubata ha masasa abantu babirukya babambura hawanje hali wanje no busere hali hawanje kubabahikizeye ho kiki kiki ah umusaidza kuna ya na gente ndu yanje utagikambura banzo leke nyihemwe bintu byanje yantera ho isasa e kigeri isasa rikatera ha yani yarigira mwa agana masa so konkor bya masasi bari mbanaka masasi ga bari mbanaka hat talk to me children also helplessly looked on as their parents were being brutalized and property destroyed mama wande bakamtera hanuna june tukoba tasoe kokoto Seven year old Catherine Katesi is in primary four at Katwe boarding primary school. Since the raid, she has not been able to go back to school because her uniform was torn as the raiders vandalized property in their house. Bakaiza saa hii kumi na hivi. Baiza ba tera masasi wa tuving. Tuwe yuko kubwa. Abantu kubwa ba sijir. Abantu ba katero masasi. Abantu ba kama tema semisho. Kutoe yuko kwa ba taho ma kwa ba tema madru ba tangu na vingu. Ba 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 tangu na budi kintu chuo na kintu chuo mungu chuo na watu kwa tava chita kwa tangu. Ba ba jangwe. Hiba tu jangu ni oda ya sala piyo rukundo. Kwa If we had not exhibited a high sense of display which we credit ourselves with because we have won trophies for being the most disciplined force in this country for two years running. <laughs> But you shot at people. Shooting at people is not equivalent to killing people. Yeah, but when or to harassing people. Somebody's arm, that shows that they, that was a narrow escape. No, there was no narrow escape. We have tools of work which we must use depending on given conditions. If we were not legally allowed to use these tools, then we shouldn't hold them at all. What surprises me is that <laughs> and nobody here is dead. Please, I want you to the, take the, this the, very carefully. This nobody out. is dead. And it's unlikely that even anybody is disabled. If we were to kill anybody, that's the time people should have died. But nobody was killed and nobody was seriously injured. But who sanctioned the operation and with what instructions? I asked the actual the executive director of Uganda Wildlife to go and oversee the operation. Unfortunately, he could not be there. So he sent his deputy. The deputy, <laughs> that, that's the one who was in charge. So it was really overseen at a higher level. And we in the government, we do not condone brutality to our people. What did the letter say? The letter was saying they have identified the FMD and they want to control it. So people should be put in specific points where the animals can be vaccinated. We read the letter and the director told us in that meeting which we had with him at Nyabu Valley. He said, and I hope he can accept his word, he said he has two orders, one written, one unwritten and he has to execute both we asked him a question i remember asking the minister the, the, the director i said honorable director you put yourself in my shoes if the minister came here and told you you stay until i sort out the problem 
accompanied by his director. And the president came and said he's going to talk to the government because the government works on institutions to sort out the problem. And if you came, if I came to you without a written statement from these people that is telling you, move out, how would you behave? I remember him saying, but I have to do this or I don't have a job. We are not working with robots, we are working with the people. And any intelligent person, and we are all intelligent, who knows how to get his job done in this era, will know how to get his job done based on the rightful procedures. So this trash about verbal orders and written orders is, is, is nonsense. Interestingly, the area where park authorities attempted to evict people is still occupied by the same people and the same authorities deny any destruction of the property and use of brutality by park rangers. There is no property that was destroyed. What are we talking about here? If you put a temporary hut in an area of the park where it should not be and we come and tell you please get out of this temporary hut of yours go in the other place and you move and once you have moved we remove the grass and the poles which property are we talking about the, the household property there's no household property that was destroyed people were allowed to take their household property there are still 125 people still camped in rangeable area and other places that were stormed by the park rangers 53-year-old Samuel Lutwama has been living here in the village codenamed Chiruhura in Karusandara for one year now after returning from Congo. He puts up in this house with his family of 12. He has been lucky that the park authorities have not stormed the area. For him, this is his home. I, I myself I was born in Katu. So then my father he was also born in, in, in Kasese here. The grandfather, they also buried here. All of them, they are here in, in Kasese. So this is our homeland, and this is our Songora. We have a Songora, and we lived in Songora since then. I can't, I can't tell that it was it started in a certain year or in a certain century, but in my knowledge, I found myself when I was in Kasese, and I'm still now in Kasese. Yeah. So this is my homeland. And you are not going anywhere. And I'm not going anywhere else. Yeah, that's, 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 that's their claim, which I say is, uh, is unfortunate. Because they just say the whole of this lower land used to be theirs. When? I we don't know and nobody knows. They say the park used to be their land. So but unfortunately the history has brought us this far when they are settled in Kavirizi, that's where they are. Bakonzo are settled here, Vanyavind are settled in Mhocha. This is a prison land that is you see to us we have come to be when it is like that. But they refer us to history, which history most of us, unfortunately, we have not read. It is not recorded, but that's what they claim. It is 10 months now since the interministerial committee was appointed. But what are its findings and recommendations? We realize as a committee that we have to find a place where to, 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 to locate the Basongora, get them out of the national park. Uh, we evaluated the various government lands available in Kasese district, like prisons, farms were underutilized. Mubuk irrigation scheme is uh, only less than half utilized. Uh, Ibuga refugee settlement area, uh, which is the largest of the land available, is approximately 30 square kilometers, was uh, also falling vacant because most refugees were now returning back to their countries. We also have the army land, which is not fully utilized. So the committee evaluated this land, the land, this land available, and all this land area basically are part of the original Songwara area. But Uganda Wildlife Authorities attributes the negative developments to the sluggish way the committee is doing its work. Of course, we have also had concerns about the pace of work of the committee. Because the time frame given to the committee by the appointing authority was two weeks. 
Now, two weeks of August 2006. Today, it is one year and we still don't have a solution finalized. This land now that is being occupied by the prison farm in Mobuku is the land that is claimed by the indigenous people, the Basongora, that it originally belonged to them before they went to Congo way back in 1970. But it is the same land that is now being proposed to be given to the Basongora. Although this is part of the land that has been earmarked to be returned to the Basongora people, there is evidence of new cultivation activities. Whereas in the other areas like Ubigando, the cultivators that threw Basongora out in 2004 prior to going to Congo are still there and the question arises as to whether they can live together again. The situation which I'm seeing now, we cannot. Mm. Why? The, the, way we, the way we are handled, it seems we cannot settle to, to, together. Because if we, are, we create an enemy, to a certain person. Mm. It's not very easy to, 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 to wrap it off. Mm. So now we have uh, that fear. The, the thinking they have in their minds mm. to disturb us in, from time to time because the, this struggle, you know, it was not just a, 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 it is a, a planned a struggle of them. They have uh, the hidden agendas which we don't know. This is Ibuga refugee resettlement land in Hima, another piece of land that has been earmarked to resettle Basongora. Although it is believed that the land is now devoid of refugees who are believed to have returned to their respective countries of Rwanda and Sudan, there is obvious evidence of their continued presence here. But the people occupying the land wouldn't admit that they are refugees. They insist they are Ugandan pastoralists who came from other parts of the country and are ready to live with whoever will be brought here. Interestingly, in spite of taking land that was once occupied by Basongora, Bakonjo still consider themselves landless. They seem to also want to share on the land that will be allocated to Basongora. The Basongora should be settled along with the Bakonzo who are also landless. That is my opinion. I don't have any problem with resettling Basongora, but they should not be resettled at the disadvantage, at the expense of their Bakonzo counterparts. At the end of the day, the only possible solution to solving the Basongora problem will no doubt lie in the return of their land that was once institutionalized supplemented with educational programs to sensitize them about the dangers of traditional pastoralism methods that may not adopt with effects of modern changing world and the fast-growing population. Well, that's all we had time for from the Focal Point desk here at Media Plus. Make sure to tune in next week for yet another edition of the Focal Point. I'm Bart Kakosa, wishing you a pleasant evening.